Welcome to Film in 5D, the show about everything film in uh, 5D Mark II. What happened? What do you mean what happened? Well, where do we get all this new stuff? Oh, we've always had it. We just got it put it in a new space, got a new studio. Do you like it? Yeah, it looks, uh... You got a light right there, got a new watermark, got new visual effects stuff. Got green screen way back there now. Got, like, ceiling lighting and stuff. It's pretty cool, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, I'm your host, Aaron Hammack, and this week we finish up our introduction to motion tracking by blowing up another car. Hey guys, Colton here with Filming 5D. Now I've got some interesting news to share with you. Aaron finally gave me the green to tell you guys this. So starting next Monday, we'll... What the hell? Dude, why does this always happen to us? I think we should shoot that again. Dude, the car just blew up. Yeah. So as you can see, we blew up yet another car, but this time around we get a little bit more realism going handheld and adding a camera jerk right when the car is exploding. Using a simple camera trick like this can add wonders to the realism of special effects like explosions, gunshots, or anything else really that would jar you if you were in that location. But of course, whenever you're doing a special effect like this one without a tripod, you then need to motion track your footage to help everything stay realistic. So let's jump on over to After Effects and I'll show you how I pulled this one off. All right, so here we have our footage, and as you can see, I've already tracked it. I've used two points, one for position and rotation. Doesn't matter where they go, really. You just want to kind of you know, spread them out as evenly as you can. And uh, as you can see, you know, I've picked, you know, just some points, you know, that are a little different, and little maybe some high contrast points or <clears throat> different colors. This one has red and white and black and stuff like that, just to help it. And since we have, you know, the quick pan, I've, I've made the track points, you know, relatively large because this outer box, like I said last week, is between frames. You know how, how much the points move. So I've got those pretty big on both of them. And real quickly, I just wanted to show you something. When you get to the point when you're doing a quick pan like this and you're tracking it, so right here you can see it's pretty blurry. And so you're going to have to go in and manually guess where the points are. I'm just guesstimating, you know, where the point was the previous frame. If I go, you know, page up here and go in between them, you can see, you can kind of get a look at it and guess. And you're gonna to want to do that for both points, obviously. And when it gets to the point where it's in focus again and it's not, you know, it's blurry, then you just go put your point back where it was and then just analyze forward with this one. But when when it's blurry, you're gonna to want to use this analyze one frame forward button or backwards if you're analyzing backwards and then or you can use page up page down which is basically just moving it one frame over to the left or right and so that's all I wanted to show you in the tracking window since we covered most of that last week this week I mainly wanted to talk about the compositing aspect which is using a null layer when you have multiple effects or assets in this case uh, null layer you can apply your track to the null layer like we go back over to here and let me just click this and show you this and so you're, you're going to target your to the null layer and you can add a null layer over here by clicking layer new null objects and then you just apply you know to the x and y just like i showed you last week and now when you when you parent any of your assets to that null layer, they're going to have the same motion. So that way you can control them independently. If you want one explosion to go, you know, at 90 degrees to the left, or if you want you know, different positions or different scales, or like I said, different rotations, that's probably the main one, or you have reflections in this one, you, they're all going to have the same movement if they're applied to the same null layer. You can have multiple null layers per scene. That's the nice thing about it. If you have, for instance, if this car explodes and someone was in it and they run out and they're on fire, you can add another null layer and then track that person running as the frame progresses. And then then that whatever fire asset you add to that person is going to be separate from the fire assets, the movements of the fire assets from the explosion itself. And uh, to show you how to do that, there's an easy way, which is just right here. So click right here and then you're going to 
parent it to the layer that you want it to have the motion of, which in this case was in the null, because that's where we have the tracking. And another way you can do it, which is pretty much the same thing, you just grab this little squiggly line, go to the layer you want, in this case the null layer, and then it's going to show up right there. So yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. And that's how you use null layers to combine effects and get the same movement out of them. As you can see, my RAM's, you know, kind of not going to be able to show it real, but you can see the rotation there. You can see it's about 15 degrees right there. And then later on, as the camera goes back up, you know, back to around zero degrees. So that's how you do that. And that's it for this week. If you have any questions, please feel free to send them to me at twitter.com forward slash Aaron Hammock. You can also follow the show's Twitter at Filmin 5 d to keep up with everything we're doing. Or if you're on Facebook, like our page at the link below. We pretty much post everything there as well. And we'll be back next week to talk about the 180 degree rule. That sounds interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Pretty basic, but people like violate it all the time for like no reason. Yeah, dude, it kind of confuses me. Like I don't really understand it myself. Yeah, well, you're about to learn it next week, so. Sweet. See you then. Go. Hey guys, uh, this is Colton. <laughs> Aaron finally gave me the green to tell you guys this, so I'm excited. Uh, next Monday, we're gonna be starting a new thing, and what the hell? <laughs> Come on. I got some really excited news. I got, I'm really excited to tell you this. I got some really excited news. I kind of want to get my. I'm supposed to be using this adjective because I'm supposed to be.